This is building a rib off of the jig that was used on the Spirit of St. Louis. It's similar to building peat and pole ribs or any other wooden airplane wing. And uh, I thought it might be beneficial for some people that are just starting out that might pick up a few tips here and there. Anyway, here's the jig. Your basic sticks. Before we get too far started here, I want to show you the difference in some hammers. When you go to the store to buy a tack hammer to build ribs, you can see the difference in them. This one is really clumsy. And there's the name on it. This one I don't have a name on it, but I bought it 30 years ago, and it is the only one that really works good. So anyway, that's just a little tip there. They're magnetic on one end, and you drive it on the other end. So I'll show you how it's done. First of all, I've pre-cut the plywood gussets. I've pre-cut the sticks to the right width to fit in the jig. I've pre-bent them in a, in a tool that I made. And here's all the gussets. You don't have to build this thing uh, it holds all of these. Little plastic dishes work just fine. The only reason I built this is I had 28 ribs to build. And I was thinking I would cut all the sticks and put them in the back rows and put all the gussets in the front rows. Then I realized once I got started, it's not that necessary if you're only building one wing. If you're building multiple wings, that's the way to go. Like you did with the stairman. The other thing is, is you find out, figure out how tall your gussets are. This way, take this one for instance, you cut all your strips that wide. And then you tape them all together. You cut a dozen strips of this. You tape them all together every four inches or so. You mark out your gussets and then you bandsaw them and put them in the holes. That way you've got multiple pieces ready to go. You don't have to wait. Okay, so I pre-cut the block the nose blocks. They're just spruce. In the end there's going to be a notch here for the long piece on the front of the wing for the leading edge to attach to. We don't know exactly where that is so when we nail it we don't want to nail in that spot because we have to cut that out later. So anyway this piece fits down in the jig like that. Then you take these pre-bent strips. Incidentally when I bend these I have the jigs upstairs in the house and when I take a bath I stick these in the bath water with me. And I can do about 10 of them at a time. It works well. That's called really um, getting in tune with your work. So you just take these and you bend them down into the jig. Like so. <clears throat> Bottom one has to be cut, I know that because I've already built one of these, so you just cut it. It doesn't really matter if you scar that a little bit because it gets a gusset anyway. Then you take this one, put it in there. come back here and do this.
good to have your finger out of the way when you do that. Now these pieces I can use elsewhere when I'm putting this together, you'll see. So, we've got that started. Now we want to take our pre-cut strips that fit the jig. We want to put them in. Put all the vertical pieces in first. This can all be pre-cut ahead of time, but you don't have to. Is it a perfect fit? Not always. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't, but once you put the gusset on, which is like this, on both sides of it, it isn't going anywhere. Continue with this. these sticks you got to make really sure that they fit the jig because it's really tough if they don't fit right. So you got to do a test once your saw is set up. Leave it set up. different size so I'm going to go to a smaller why is that a size? just the way they designed it I don't know why they made them that way but hmm. this one here is also a different size There's just two smaller sizes in this particular rib. Yeah. Let's see if we can use this stuff up. These saws work good when they're new. This particular saw, I ground all the set off of it to use it for cutting fret boards on guitars. So it doesn't cut as good as it should, but these are the hot thing. These work pretty good. Because you build guitars as well as airplanes. Doesn't everybody? 
You got a pretty good idea where it cut them. Okay, that's all the wood that goes in those ribs. big nose piece that I've pre-cut and it's not exact it's a little bit big so I don't have to be too critical when I put it on there I try to keep this edge even with that edge if possible anyway take some glue This glue is maybe a little bit thick, but doesn't seem to bother while well, it works. It's pretty, pretty good that way. And you put the gusset on. Here's another critical thing. This is my my nails. You got to seed the table that you don't have to search for nails everywhere you go. When you're done, you can pick them up with a magnet if you've got leftovers. Use my hammer. Pick up a nail. Put it in. Pick up a nail. Put it in close up there because they don't... And I put those in at a pretty steep angle because they, they're holding into the block. Remember, we're going to cut an area out here so you don't want to get too much in there. You don't want to get too close to it because you don't want to have to cut through nails. That's no fun. Saws don't like it either. Yeah. Price of saw blades nowadays. And I put a couple out here just to clamp it good. If you're building a home built, you can really bypass this stuff and staple it and then after the glue dries, pull the staples back out and varnish the ribs. I just wipe the excess off like that. So then we'll go with next gusset. I coat the whole back of the gusset. I'm not going to spend time trying to figure out where the sticks are exactly to get it glued right because in the end you have to varnish all that wood anyway so why not have a coat of glue on it doesn't add that much weight to it anyway on the bigger gussets like this one I put one in the middle put three of them there. basically every leg that comes down has to have a nail Thank you. 
does it. For the people that have done this all their life, this is going to be a really boring video for them, but the people that haven't ever done this, it might be worse than watching. It's really important that you uh, have the nails spread out so you don't have to search for one every time you pick them up. The other thing is, a gusset like this, you know, this gets trimmed out with a rotary file when I'm done. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but it'll only go one way. So you want to make sure you put the glue on the right side of it. Because since I only have one jig, I'm going to glue up one side of this thing and it's going to sit in the jig overnight. And then in the morning after I have breakfast, I'll come out here and I'll put the other side together. Makes you feel like you're doing one rib a day, but actually you're only doing one side of a rib a day. <laughs> but you're coming out with a full rib. This, this gusset's pretty big, so it's going to take a couple in here, too. When you go to set a nail down like that, just tap it. You don't have to hit it hard to get it started. Just set it down where you want it. And if it's a little bit off-center, it doesn't really matter. If you don't like it, put another one next to it. These gussets are pretty self-explanatory where they go, so I don't bother covering the whole thing. You want to get them lined up and hold it in place. And then start a nail at each end so it doesn't move around on you. <laughs> Sometimes. Oh, yeah, there I am searching. Sometimes you have to make it give up. Sometimes they just don't want to go in right. Just keep after it. Show it who's boss. Huh? Show it who's boss. Show it who's boss. I try to line up points so it looks symmetrical when you're all done. That way you know how you did it on the other side when you go to put the gussets on the other side of it. Sometimes you pick up two nails, I just go ahead and do it. If the nail goes away, it goes away. <laughs> it's stuck on the other end. There it is. It wants to be determined, it wants to get put in, so there it goes.
The other thing that's really important is to have a hard surface you're working on because if this thing bounces around, it's almost impossible. How many ribs do you suppose you've built in your life? Um, I don't know. So you did this for the Pete and Paul, and you did this many times for the Pete and Paul, and you did this for um, how many sets of Stearman wings? Twenty-eight sets of Stearman wings. And twenty-eight sets means times four. Times four. <coughs> And you did, well, you didn't do, yeah, you didn't do this for the spirit other than some of the modification ribs. That's right. A lot of the spirit ribs, we, in fact, all of the spirit ribs, except for the ones I modified, I bought from the Aerospace Museum in San Diego. Primarily because I couldn't build them as cheap as they can. And secondly, they were built in the original jig that the Spirit of St. Louis ribs were built in. And I was going for total authenticity, so... Authenticity. Authenticity. Spelling and speaking is not my big deal. No, it's creating. See when I pick up nails how I choose to find them that are out by themselves. You only want to pick up one nail, otherwise it takes time to mess around trying to get the other one away from it so you can use it. And then you can spread them out a little bit, it doesn't hurt. And these are just tips that you've picked up over the years from doing it a number of different ways and discovering what was easiest. It's the fastest, simplest way I know to build a rib. That one's a little bit off to the side. Didn't go through, but I'm going to put another one in there just because. I like these. These are easy to put the glue on because you don't have to worry about anything. Just smear it on there. Again, try to line up the points as best you can. Now this rib is for the Ryan M2. Ryan M2, there's 28 ribs on it. And plus there's four wingtip ribs, two on each side, which I still have to build a jig for. This is actually the last long rib that I'm building for this airplane. And a couple center section ribs at the end here where I'm working now is different. 
it actually curves down like this to meet up with the center section. Which what I've done is I've marked this top cap strip here and cut it off here. And I'm going to put it back in the jig that I made to steam bend the front of these and then I can curve it down so I don't have to tweak it so much. Use the right end of the tool. That makes a difference. I'll let you know. Sometimes you pick them up, they don't quite get on there just right. I don't want that that high. Bear with me, we're just about there. See, that's the problem you run into sometimes. I hope to have a on there first. It does. Nail all by itself isn't going to do you any good. Nope. Helps when you have glasses on if you need glasses too. Which Tom does, but rarely uses. I 
This is my cutoff line, so I'd like to bring the plywood up to that cutoff line. This one? This line here is where you saw the end of the rib off. Right. That's what takes time. You don't have to mess around doing that. What was it? I'm trying to pick up a nail when there was too many other two nails other around stuff it. stuff right there, yeah. Okay. It's going to go in. Part of the problem is the end of this was bouncy and it was hard to get the nail to stick. That's one side of the rib. Now what I'll so do... So do you cut this now? No, I'll cut it tomorrow. Okay, after you get the other side done. What I'll really do, I don't cut them anymore because I run the plywood to that mark and then I use that sander right there. Oh. And I trim the plywood on the nose block on the sander to where it matches the spruce. And then I grind this on there. And then before the ribs get put on, I'll make a metal template to clamp to the leading edge of each rib. And I can sand the rib on the nose on that machine until it all they all match exactly the same. And on that metal template, it'll be like eighth inch aluminum. I'll have the cutout for that that I'm talking about up here on the nose incorporated in that. And then all the ribs will be the same. If you don't do it that way, you're going to wind up looking down the leading edge and it'll be like this. So that's how you build a rib. That's one way to build a rib. That's how you build a rib. And follow us to the other shop and I'll show you the airplane that's going on and the pile of ribs I've already got built.